Welcome. This video is called Cultivating a Less Nervous System. And this video is brought to you by the Leitrim Development Company under the Social Inclusion and Community Activation Program. My name is Jared Martin Gottlieb. And I'm Dr. Paula Martin Gottlieb. And let's talk about stress today. So did you know when you're experiencing stress that your nervous system is running on what we call fight, flight, or freeze activation? And this is governed by a very, very old part of the brain, which we sometimes call the reptilian brain, which is really designed for our survival. When we're experiencing stress, this part of the nervous system is activated. And we'll often be aware that there is discomfort in the body and strain in the mind. The nervous system will often have a lot of adrenaline and cortisol running through them, stress hormones. So you may notice during moments of stress that the mind is very busy. The mind might be racing. You might notice that there's tension in the body, sometimes clenching of the jaws or tightening of the shoulders tension in the belly is common. In practicing mindfulness, we can actually learn to shift gear with the nervous system. And as we bring in mindful awareness, it's as though we're putting a slow brake on the nervous system. So we actually shift from that fight, flight or freeze to a certain relaxation response. And sometimes it can be as simple as taking a pause, taking a step back. But I'd like to talk you through a simple practice that I find useful for managing stress. And this is offered by a teacher, Michelle MacDonald, and it's the practice of RAIN. So the OR, the first step in RAIN, is to recognize when stress is present. And often we don't. We carry on running and racing through our day with a large amount of stress. And it's often when we you know, become unwell that we notice, ah, oh, I've been actually under quite a lot of stress. So we can simply begin to recognize moment by moment when the system goes out of balance. The second part of RAIN is to acknowledge or allow this sense of stress. And the acknowledgement may be simply taking a breath. Ah, and acknowledging I'm noticing that, ah, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit anxious or I'm noticing that there's tension present. Okay, so this is here. This is our second step. When we're not aware of stress, we cannot learn to respond wisely. We're actually caught by it. The third step of RAIN is to investigate, to be curious. What's actually happening in my body and in my mind right now in this difficult moment? So we may actually be curious about, oh, where is the tension in my body? And if it's in the belly, for example, we may choose to place a hand in the belly and even offer some deep belly breath. If we notice that there's a lot of tension or swirling of the mind, we may choose to actually bring a real awareness to the contact of the feet to the floor and ground our attention in the physical body. So we start to become curious about our experience rather than being caught by it. And the N of RAIN can have several different meanings. One meaning that's useful is non-attachment. To realize that these difficult thoughts, that these difficult feelings and sensations will come and go. We don't need to hold on to them. The second um, reflection for N can also be the question of nourish, which is a really, really helpful question to ask, how can I actually take care of myself in this moment? What do I need right now? And sometimes that need may be needing to talk to somebody, reaching out to someone, picking up the phone. It may be that we need to move the body, we need to go for a run or do some exercise. 
It may be that having a cup of tea is helpful in the moment. Or sometimes reaching out to your GP or to a counsellor is supportive. What's most important to remember is that in developing a practice of awareness, we can actually learn to respond to ourselves with greater care in these moments of stress, rather than being caught by them, rather than sort of following that path of stress reactivity. Mm. That's so helpful. And Rain, I know from my own experience as well, can be such a useful way of relating to stress. And I'm thinking it'd be good to also break stress down into its components. So what is stress made of? It's made of difficult emotions, overwhelm, anger, fear, frustration, doubt, sadness. And those emotions then go into stories, thoughts that just seem impossible to deal with. And the reality is every challenge you've ever came upon in your life, you have found your way through. And yet the present challenge can it so often feel impossible. It's a paradox. So we're going to look at some ways of how to get out of that sense of this is just too much. I can't deal with this. And break that loop of emotions feeding into stories and then the stories go back into the emotions. So a teacher of mine, Joseph Goldstein, has a great, great teaching around negative thoughts, which is, and thoughts in general, which is there's two ways that we give thoughts power. One is by believing them. The other is by pushing them away. And independent of that, it's just a rising and passing. It's nothing but clouds moving through the sky. And so now I'm going to lead a practice, a mindfulness of stressful thoughts practice that is going to be letting us have the difficult thoughts, difficult emotions passing through like clouds moving through a vast expanse of sky. So you can find a way of sitting that's relaxed, upright, at ease. And your eyes can be closed or open with a soft downward gaze. Either is fine. And we'll start by just taking a few moments to ground the attention in the body, just like Paula talked about. Noticing the feet on the floor, feeling yourself held by the ground, held by this moment. You might notice the breath, breathing in, Breathing out. And as you attend to the breath, you may notice thoughts are arising, passing. And if this is the case, it's not a problem. With these mindfulness meditation exercises, it's not about getting rid of thoughts. It's about changing the relationship to them. So if there's thoughts present, you can simply recognize as Paula instructed, oh, thinking. Maybe there's an emotion and you can recognize what that emotion is. Calm, fear, joy, sadness, just letting it be as it is. And you might imagine the thoughts, the emotions, as clouds moving through a vast blue sky. There's nothing to hold on to. There's nothing to resist. They're just passing through whatever the thoughts may be, whatever the emotions may be. They're just passing through like big clouds or small clouds moving through a vast expanse of wide open sky. Letting yourself rest as the awareness, the sky that has the space for all that's passing through, all of the thoughts, all the emotions, all sensations, all sounds. And one sound you may hear now is the bell. 
bring to a close this mindfulness practice with difficult, with stressful thoughts. So we hope that these practices will be useful, useful to you as you're relating to stress uh, and difficulty. And even more than that, we, we wish for you that stress and difficulty not be present in your life. But for when they do arise, as they do for all of us, may this be helpful. So thank you for practicing with us. Bye for now. Be well.